Hey everyone and welcome to my craft room. Uh, my name's Julianne Richards and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator in southern Tasmania. Um, thanks guys for purchasing or, or um, uh, taking part in my latest online um, class by mail. Um, it's just a single card this time um, and uh, as you know you've got you probably got your kit sitting in front of you. Um, it makes this really cute open book easel card which I think I've actually fallen in love with quite a lot. So you probably guys will see a fair few of these popping up with various stamp sets and things on my feed over the next few months. But it's just really, really lovely. It's really a, a highlight of, you know, of, of card making as far as I'm concerned. One of the best ones I've seen. Uh, one small tip before we get started. If you plan on popping it in an envelope, um, it is quite thick. Well, the one I've made here is quite thick with its curves. Um, if you do want to post it in an envelope, don't make these curves quite as as um, um, high, as, as, as obvious, sort of, um, and I'll show you in a moment, I'll make the next one a lot thinner, um, sort of bring those curves down so they're closer to the card. So it'll actually fit into an envelope a lot easier and not get squashed or I suppose if you were just giving it to someone you could make a little box just a little flat box to pop it into as well or you know a much larger envelope that won't squish it down if you were just giving it to someone you know handing it to somebody but um, yeah if you definitely want to post it and put it in a standard size envelope definitely bring those curves down a little bit so it's not quite so bouncy but anyway we'll um, as I say I'll do the next one that's um you know a bit a bit more flat for popping in an envelope just take my cardigan off it's a bit warm in my craft room today um okay so let's get started as i say your kit will look when you grab it in the mail will look something like that oh, i just might check that my ipad is right oh gosh yeah there's a fair bit of volume there um okay so your kit will roll up and it'll look a bit like that um i'll actually give you an envelope with it as well so you'll actually have that in there but this is just my my uh, demonstration one so I haven't popped an envelope in. Uh, all your cardstock is cut and scored and all your designer series paper is cut to size as well plus you've got your um, your die cuts and your die and your pearls as well. So I'll just go through I'll actually pop the actual measurements on uh, in the comments of this video or in the description of this video so um, you'll have them there but I'll just basically run through what you've got so you can yell out if you're missing something okay so you've got a card base there and the card base is um, eight and a quarter long by five and a half high and it's scored at uh, four and an eighth and two and a sixteenth or so that's two two and a sixteenth from there to there and then another two and a sixteenth from there to there if you didn't want to bother with the sixteenth i'd just go two inches and two inches then you have a slightly longer bit at this end but with this design that doesn't really matter too much and you'll probably you can pick that up as we go you've then got two pieces of this beautiful designer series paper and they are cut with an eighth of an inch on the length and on that side there so you're actually if you're looking at, at your easel from the, the front on um, those pieces of paper are going to sit just there so this one faces you when you're looking at the card in its proper position and this is on the easel base itself we'll come back to those in a minute then you've got various pieces of designer series paper and cardstock you've got another piece of um, gorgeous grape that's what we're using for the base and that's um, seven eighths of an inch wide and about five and a quarter inches long I think something like that as I say I'll put the measurements in the comments and then you've got a piece of matching designer series paper that is an eighth of an inch smaller and just sits on it just like that. And that's actually forming the foot rest or the little um, rest of our, um, of our uh, uh, easel. Then you've got, as I say, various pieces of uh, basic white and the beautiful designer series paper. Uh, and they are sort of, they all graduate down by like a quarter of an inch at a time and they sort of alternate between wisp, um, cardstock and um, uh, designer series paper now if I haven't scored these for you I should have and I'll make sure that with the ones I'm sending today that I have 
um, just fold them in half and fold and score them down the center so you want them to be like that if I've just given you a plain piece of designer series paper just fold it over and score it there in the half but I, hopefully I've remembered to do that with all the ones I've just sent out um, so we've got each we've got like two pieces of designer series paper and two pieces of cardstock that all just sort of graduate down in size like that so that forms your actual book as you can see then you've got various die cuts and some dimensionals and some of the beautiful pearls as well so we'll come back to those in a moment okay so we might as well get started we'll start with the card base itself as I was explaining so we've got the designer series paper here and you just grab, add, grab some glue or might use snail actually so use some snail or some glue and that says a new a new refill so I have to wind it on a little bit till it starts so just just popping some snail or some glue or whatever your adhesive of choice is. You want to put one piece of cardstock here on the <clears throat> on the base of your easel, just like that. And then we can see straight away which one I'm going to do here. It's going to be this one here that pops up like that. So somebody's just pulled outside my house, and I hope they're not coming in because that would interrupt my video, and I'm not very wouldn't that wouldn't be great. No, they're headed across the road. That's good. Okay, so and this other one, this other piece of uh, now these these are two inch wide. These individual pieces of cardstock, and they'll just fit in there like that. Just like that. Okay. Cool. Bit of a snail on there. So you've basically got. If you looked at it that way, you've got a Z fold card, but we're actually going to have it laying down like that. So we might as well do our little step, our little um, little easel step as well. So just again with the designer series paper and pop it on the, the matching piece of gorgeous grape. Okay, and that is going to, I've given you some dimensionals and we're going to pop that on there eventually with some height to stop the card from falling forward. But we won't do that just yet because we want to gauge how high eventually we want the card to sit up. Okay, so now we get to the fun bit, which is actually creating our little book, which is what we're all here for. Okay, so what you do is you grab the two large pieces of paper. So the largest piece of um, basic white and the largest piece of designer series paper. Now... If you like that side, that's fine. That's the side I'm going to use. If you prefer the other side, well, feel free to flip them over. Um, just because I'm going to use that side in this demonstration, um, I think you'll actually see I've used the other side um, on the original card. So up to you, personal preference all the way. Um, and so what we need to do is adhere the two spines together. And the best way to do that is with tearing tape or double-sided tape. So I have two widths of double-sided tape in my stash. I've got the thick one, um, which is six mil, and I've got a smaller one, which would have to be less than, it would be like three mil. So very, very, about an eighth of an inch wide. Um, so I'm actually gonna use this really thin one first. But if you, whatever, it doesn't really make any difference. I've actually used both and they're both just as good, but I just find that this smaller one, um, it sort of fits the design better. Okay, so what all you need to do is grab your designer series paper, flip it over and pop a line of um, tear and tape or double sided tape along the fold, along the centre score. And then bring that up, take the back off it and then lie that along the centre fold of your um, whisper white or your basic white. I've got that the right way yeah okay so you're basically lining up the two um, the two spines so they're even the rest of the design matches and is even and then grab your um, bone folder or something that's a little bit um, a little bit uh, pointy and just run it along there so it um, sticks nice and um, nice and evenly so you've got them stuck together at at the, the spine just like that so then what we want to do is grab these um, this top page and we want to cur we want to stick it so stick this end, this leading edge here down 
to the, the page underneath. Uh, and you want to, at the same time, give it a bit of a curl. So you can actually, and I'll probably do the next one differently, grab your, um, I don't know, a, um, uh, what, what, you know, a pen or a, a rolling pin or something like that. Just um, grab it with your hand and curl your cardstock a wee bit. And then you can do that to the, to the, um, to the whisper white as well. Just curl it. And as I say with this one, I'm not going to curl it as dramatically as I did with the other one, but you do need to give it a bit of a, just break. You're sort of breaking the integrity of the card a little bit so that it curves, just like that. So you've got, as I see you now, you've got like a little butterfly thing happening. So what I'm gonna do, as I say, is bring this one and attach it underneath and curl it up a wee bit so it's actually you know, put it flat it's that's the gap we want to just bring it in probably double the gap on the edge there so that it's just in like that now there's a couple of ways you can do that you can grab some go back to the double-sided tape or you could grab some uh, which I can't find my glue dots or you could just use normal glue as long as you're quite happy just to hold it until it sets um, I was going to use glue dots for this one, but for the life of me, I don't know where they've gone. Oops. Not a very good plan, is it? Hang on, I might have some more down here. Okay. Grab them out of my spare little set here, my little emergency crafting kit. There we go. I'll use these. So all I'm going to do is pop a glue dot on the top middle and bottom of the um, of the, the, the um, designer series paper page and adhere it underneath. So I want three of those. So I'm gonna find it easier just to put that under there and press it on. We've got one. That one's decided to stick to my finger, so I'll pop it on from my finger. And then the third one under there so now I've got my three glue dots you can see them there probably shining in the in the light um, on the page on the underneath of the page so as again as I said bring it it's a little bit fiddly hopefully I'll get the right angle just bring it to a slight curve and stick them down So as you can see, they've got a slight curve, slightly higher than the page underneath. So we'll do the same thing for the other one. I'll grab another three. One at the top. One. <laughs> the middle one's off my finger again. And the third one at the end here. The next page is I'll show you how to do it with double-sided tape, which some people might find it a little bit easier. Okay. Okay, again, bringing it down. Slight curve in relation to the one underneath. And glue down. So again, you've got that slight curve away from the page underneath. I hope that makes sense and I'll show you again because we're going to do it twice. We're going to do it again to our top one. Okay, so this little one here, I'm actually going to curve it first and you might actually find that easier. So curve your pages first rather than attaching them at the spine first. So just grab, I'm going to use the uh, my te uh, tool, my um, take a pick tool because it's slightly bigger. So just roll both of them over the tool just to give them just to the center just to give them a slight curve we'll do the same with this one and again we have a slight curve that meets in the middle like a bird's wings isn't it really with what we've created there the silhouette of a bird's wing okay 
So what we'll do again is bring in our um, double-sided tape and pop it along the spine. And bring it into place with the other one. Line up the two spines. And just encourage it to got glue just in that central spine there okay exactly the same as we did with the first one um, I might do this one this top one with double-sided tape just to show you the difference as I say both techniques work just as well it just depends what you've got on hand so what I'm going to do is lie a piece of double-sided tape right along the edge of this one so there like that so this is in place of the glue dots that we did the first one as I say both options work very well. Um, line it up with a slight curve so it's even and force it down. So there we've got a slight curve away from the base, back from the design from the hard stock. And again on the other side. So you might find this particular way a little bit easier than handling the glue dots entirely up to you and again down onto the page bring it up slightly with slight curve even all the way and force it and glue it down so as I say I'm not making these curves quite as pronounced that's the word I was thinking of pronounced as I did with the first card so I can pop it into an envelope okay same deal now with our, we're going to put, bring you the four pages of our book together. And I suppose you could give your book even more pages if you wanted to. You could go to six or eight. That would be quite interesting. If anyone does that, please let me know. It would be interesting to see. So I've popped a bit of glue on the back of the, um, a bit of double-sided tape on the back of our, um, our smaller pages. And I'm going to bring them into line with the larger pages. Make sure it all lines up, top and bottom and sides, and glue them down. Just like that. Oops, I went off my glue mark there a bit. Okay, and then, same deal, we're going to glue these front two pages to the back two pages with a slight curve between them. And I'll use the double-sided tape again. I actually find that a little bit easier. I'm getting glue dots all over my fingers. Bring it back a tiny bit and glue it. There we are. And the same on the other side. So there we are we have our books and that as you can see that those curves are not quite as high as the curves on my original book so you know this one's going to fit in the envelope a lot easier than this one but I quite like the, the dramatic nature of that one that looks really really like it gives it a real 3d effect so my first preference would be to hand this card to someone with a really curvy um, a curvy um, sort of pages but if you as I say if you're going to pop it in an envelope you'd have to keep it a little bit less curvy okay so it's a toss-up for me now as to whether we'd best decorate this now or wait till it's on the card um, I did it waited till it was on the card the last time when I made this and I found it a little bit fiddly so I might actually do this one while it's off the card and when I mean decorate it I mean add its little um, hydrangeas and pearls. So you've got some die cuts here from the wonderful Hydrangea Hill collection. Um, you've got the die cut silhouette I suppose of the hydrangea there in, in the old olive and you've got the leaves here and that's they've just been cut straight from the wonderful designer series paper. 
Now, if you have a little bit of time, you don't, not too much of a hurry, not too impatient, I'd actually grab each of those little petals and with your two thumbs, sort of curl them up a little bit just to give them that sort of a bit of a 3D effect. You just go around them all. It's a little bit fiddly, takes a little bit of time and you tend to find that you um, squash them down <laughs> the very next time you, when you move to the next one, you tend to squash down the ones you've just um, forced up. So um, it is a little bit frustrating, but it's worth it, I think, just to give it that little bit of extra depth. Um, yeah, I think it is definitely worth it. So just spend a couple of minutes curving those up. And then if you've squashed it flat, curve it back up again. But as I say, definitely worth it. You could probably come in from behind and, and push something fine through to give them to give them that. Yeah, that would work as well. And you don't flatten. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing what you think of. Um, it might be best to do it this way if you've got like a, a stylus tool or something. Pop in that way and curve them up that way. Oh, wow. How many have I done? And I've just worked that out. Okay. I'm not the cleverest in the, you know, sharpest tool in the shed sometimes. There you go. You've been present for a discovery. For me anyway. Everyone else probably worked it out ages ago. Okay, so there we are. We've given them a little bit of height. So what you need to do is grab some glue. And in this case, I'd actually suggest you use glue. And pop some glue on the back of there. Not a lot, you don't need a lot. And there's not a lot for it to stick to once you've stuck all those you know, petals up in the air. And you've got to try and line up the curves on the hydrangea flowers with the curves of the actual silhouette. You might need to rotate it a few times. There you go, I think I've got it. Yep, that's it. Until they all line up. Yet again, then again, I mean, you know, you guys might be happy with it slightly out of line, but I'm a bit funny like that. Just line it up and glue it down. So you've got your beautiful hydrangea there on its stem. Then you've got this little, oh gosh, it's stuck to me. You've got this little um, sort of veins, the little veins of the leaf that there. So just pop some glue on the back of that, just a little bit, doesn't have to be a lot. You'll have a horrible glue mess if you use too much. And we pop that in place over there. So that just gives your leaves a little bit of, a little bit of extra interest as well. Okay, a little bit too much glue there. And that would be so lot unlike me to use too much glue. Not. Okay. Oh, too much glue, it's stuck to my finger. Okay, so there's our uh, hydrangea um, assembled. That's really sweet, isn't it? I think that's one of the prettiest things from the current mini catalogue. We'll bring back in our little book. And what we want to do is lay our hydrangea across the front of our book and actually glue it there in place. So it's actually only touching the um, the underneath book in a couple of places along sort of like the central spine of that there and that one little spot on its um, on its uh, stem there so what you want to do is just pop if you engage where that touching is and just pop glue just where you think it's going to roughly be it doesn't have to be too amazingly accurate but it is good to not use too much and I've done that pretty well I think I can feel that it's actually stuck there and there so that's a little bit fiddly you might find it easier to pop it actually on the book first so pop it on the book and then pop your hydrangea down and then do this part second so you can actually see where it's going to stick and I think it's definitely easier to, to do this before you've actually got your um, your card assembled because I found that quite fiddly when I did it the first time. Okay, so I think all we need to do now is pop our sentiments on. I've given you various sentiment boxes from the, um, the die set for the hydrangea heel. I've given you two of these little stitched rectangles and a tag. Now, I don't really mind which one you use. 
it's entirely up to you it's your kit whatever you've got sentiments that fit is um, isn't up to you if you've got the hydrangea hill um, stamp set it's got a couple of sentiments that fit this sentiment box pretty much perfectly um, there's a beautiful I love you there's a um, I appreciate all the little things you do which I'll probably put on one of my boxes um, and what else I was thinking actually of using the tag instead this time just to show you the tag where would the tag be? Probably under there somewhere. There. Yeah, so we've got the little tag would fit things like, there's a tiny little thank you there. If you've got a thank you from another set that you'd prefer to use, then, um, well, obviously if you've got... Um, other sets that you're using then you probably won't have this dilemma but um, there's a with love there as well now I might use a little thank you from here and I'll put that on the tag and it might not be the way you decide to go as you can see with the um, with the original card I've popped a, a large um, sentiment box there all I've done is um, stamp it and then pop some glue hard on that end and tuck the glue up under the hydrangea so and there's no actual glue anywhere else so that's all I've done is basically glue it up under there um, so that's entirely your call with your kit I'll grab a block so I'm going to use the gorgeous grape to stamp these because it's uh, the theme of the card is all these beautiful purples and pinks and blues so I'll use my gorgeous grape I'm actually going to use as I say use the tag and thank you As I say, I'll bring, get rid of that, in case we have a glue disaster, oh, it's an ink disaster. I'll bring that little thing in and maybe tag mm, covers a little bit too much there. Sorry you guys, I'm sort of making this up as I go along, aren't I? Maybe there. Maybe up under there. Sorry, working it out as I go along. Okay, let's make a decision. As I say, you can see from the original one that you can use various sentiments and sentiment boxes but I'm going to just pop some glue on the back of this little tag because I don't want to hide the fact that it's meant to be a little tag I'm just going to pop it on there just like that probably not my favorite position but I just wanted to show you the little tag that I've given you as an option. There we go. Okay, so then we've got our little sentiment, actual sentiment boxes, and I'm going to use, as I mentioned before, the um, I appreciate all the little things that you do, which goes with the thank you quite nicely. Again, I'm going to do it in gorgeous grape. So I should have given you, well I have given you, is that gorgeous grab? I have given you two little stitched rectangles and a tag. So you guys could basically just work out what you want. There we go. I appreciate all the little things you do. Okay, I'm going to pop that. So I've got that one spare. I'll pop that aside. Okay, so let's assemble this guy now. So we've got our little easel that we created before. And now you've got your beautiful little book. 
as well. So what you want to do is line up the top half of the book with the top half of your easel. So you're actually going to line it up so you've got the same sort of width um, uh, around the whole edge like that. And then you're going to glue just the top half to, of the book to the easel behind. So this top part here that you've got the designer series paper on. Now the best you can do that with any way you want, but I'm going to use my double sided tape again. And remembering to only do it on the top, to only put it on the top half of your card. So it's going to, you're going to piece there, a piece on the spine again. And a piece over here. You could use snail and you could use your glue dots, it's up to you. I'm going to just continue with the double sided tape. Oop, that bit just came off. Just be careful of your flower on the other side. I've just realised that I've been a bit rough with it. Just keep in mind you've got that there. Oh. Apologies, I stuck that back on the wrong place, so that's that's fine. There we go. Okay, so as I say, be very careful because you've got your flower back on the other. You might have to do some running repairs on your flower on the back. So we're just going to line that up uh, center top and or sides and top and gently bring it in with your double sided tape there we go so that is a little bit fiddly that way especially with the flower already on there so yeah just a, a personal choice there what you decide to do as I say you could could assemble it first and then add your flower but I, when I did that the first time it was a little bit fiddly because you were trying to work with something that wanted to bounce up at you um, quite a lot so that's fine that's all done and that's stuck there my flower I've put some running repairs on there so that's flat that's how high this one is I reckon you could probably get that in an envelope quite happily um, yeah, I, I um, yeah, and it, it might flatten a bit, but I don't think it would cause too much problems. But I think, you know, I think in hindsight, this is probably a delivered in-person card. You'd want to be there and see the person's face when they opened it up, surely. Okay, so we'll bring in our little um, stopper, our little footrest, and here you have to decide how high you want your card to sit. If you want it to sit really high, you bring your stopper in right at the back. If you're happy with it just to sit a little bit lower, you can bring your stopper in more towards the front. So it just depends where you want that to sit. So I'm going to pop some dimensionals on the back of that, and you should have dimensionals in your kit. Just pop some dimensionals, some foam squares, whatever you use, on there. Now I'm going to have it sit sort of centrally, not too high, not too low. About there. Pop it on as centre and straight as I can. Just like that. Ooh, a bit rough, Julianne. Okay, so it sits up sort of like that sort of height. Just like that. Just like that. Okay. So you've got your little sentiment box that you've just stamped. So I'm going to pop that on to my little um, my little footrest like that. I got that as straight as I thought I did. That's all right. Okay, so just some glue on the back of my little our little second sentiment box, and just choose where you'd like to put it. I'm going to pop it slightly to the left hand side. Okay, just like that. Okay, oh that's really nice. Okay, so we've got a couple of the really glorious pearl, um, 
pearl enamel pearls. Um, these are in the um, these are in the Highland Heather shade, and I'm going to pop those onto our book as well. So be very gentle there because you it's you're trying to press it onto something that's quite springy, and you don't want to be too rough. But they should stick pretty easy. Okay, done. Absolutely done. I thought about this one. There's no actual place to write on this card the way it is. What I thought you could do is add a white sentiment or a white rectangle or sort of like a sentiment box or something that's quite large just up in here. And that's where you could write your message. So it would be, you know, it'd be sort of partially hidden when the card's on display. But I don't think that's too much of a, too much of a problem. Just like that. Right, or you could put something on the back as well. Entirely up to you. Depends. I think I'd prefer to pop it on the inside there so it's partially hidden because I hate my handwriting. Anyway, all done. So that's our video for today. That's our two, that's our open book card, which was my little bonus class for February because I just sort of fell in love with it and had such a great response when I posted the photo. It seemed too good an opportunity to pass up. Um, both of the cards I've done are fairly similar. Um, the only difference is, what was the only difference? Oh, I've used the tag on this one and I've used the second sentiment box on this one. I think I actually prefer that sentiment box, it sort of the way it sort of sneaks up under the, um, the hydrangea, but the tag is just as nice. And if you've got a, a nice little sentiment that you want to use, then that's probably the tags, the thing to use. And as I say, you've got your second little sentiment box to use on the on the on the footrest as well um, they're both basically the same design as I say I've shown you how to make this one slightly flatter for posting whereas this one's very high so to achieve that really high look rather you would be bringing those pages when you're gluing them together you'd be bringing them further in so that there's more of a curl in there so um, I'll let you have a little bit of an experiment with that as you go with your kits anyway that's the two cards for today or oh, the one card for this particular class I hope you enjoy that one um, it's really lovely and as I say I think I'm slightly addicted so you'll probably see them pop up on my news feed or you know, quite often over the next few months uh, but thanks very much and uh, thanks as I say thanks for buying the class I hope you enjoyed it enough to come back and buy some more in the future um, I really enjoy producing them for you and I just love I just absolutely adore making the little kits so um, please pop back whenever you see something that you like the look of anyway so thanks very much um, I'll talk to you all later and uh, have a great day